In this video, we're going to take a look at problems related to chapter 7 on gases from practice exam 2.2 in the fall 22 semester. So this first question discusses a sample of methane at a mass of 75.2 grams. Methane is CH4, and we're told that it occupies a volume of 10.3 liters. Assuming no change in temperature or pressure, let's underline that. This means temperature and pressure are constant. How many grams of methane must be added to increase the volume to 15 liters? So we're trying to get to a final volume of 15 liters, maintaining the pressure and temperature at their current values by adding methane. So as a mental image, we can think about this as blowing up a balloon. We've got a balloon full of methane that starts with a volume of 10.3 liters. And what we'd like to do is essentially blow methane into this balloon to enlarge its volume to 15 liters. And what we want to know is what's the change in mass essentially in going from the initial situation where we've got 75.2 grams of methane in the balloon initially to a final mass, let's call it M sub F, we're going to need to figure that out to figure out the delta or change in mass needed to get up to 15 liters. Okay, so how could we think about going about doing this? Well, probably the most systematic way to go about it is to convert the mass to moles and then think about the relationship between moles and volume for an ideal gas at constant pressure. So let's go about doing that. 75.2 grams of methane. Now the molar mass of methane here is going to be about 16.04 grams for every mole of material. And so we can pretty straightforwardly calculate the moles here of methane just by plugging and chugging. And we end up with 4.688 moles of CH4. And let's think about this as our initial number of moles, in initial or in sub i. What is in final? Well, to think about this, let's consider the relationship between volume and number of moles for a gas. Avogadro's law. Avogadro's law effectively says the ratio of volume to number of moles for a gas is a constant. So for example, the initial volume divided by the initial number of moles is equal to the final volume divided by the final number of moles. And in fact, we know the initial volume, that's 10.3 liters. We know the initial number of moles, we just figured that out, that's the 4.688 moles. That ratio is a constant at constant pressure and temperature, Avogadro's law, effectively, right? We know that our target final volume is 15 liters, and the only unknown remaining here is in final, the final number of moles of the gas when it occupies a volume of 15 liters. So now, with a little bit of cross-multiplication and uh, doing some math, we can figure out the final number of moles. So let's do that now. Rearranging and solving for n sub f. I arrive at 6.827 moles is the quantity of methane that needs to be inside that balloon to get it up to a volume of 15 liters. All right, so now we can refer back to n initial and consider n final minus n, n initial as the delta n. So let's do that now. So the, the change in number of moles here, well, that's going to be n final minus n initial. And doing that math, I get 2.139 moles of CH4 must be added to the balloon to increase its volume from 10.3 liters to 15 liters. And what's the corresponding mass of that? Well, we're just going to multiply by the molar mass of CH4, 16.04 grams per mole. And this comes out to... 34.3 grams of methane that need to be added to the container to bring the volume up from 10.3 to 15 liters. So as a sanity check here, right, we can notice that in essence what we're doing is increasing the volume by 1.5 times. 
In order to do that, we essentially need to make sure that the final number of moles is 1.5 times the initial number of moles, and we do that by adding essentially half of the initial mass, or roughly speaking, half of the initial mass of methane into the balloon, and that's exactly how the numbers shake out. 34.3 is a little bit less than half of 75.2, and 15 liters is a little bit less than 1.5 times 10.3 liters. So the sanity check here confirms that 34.3 is on the right scale. Before we leave this problem, it is worth noting that it was unnecessary, actually, to convert to moles. And the reason is, if we're talking about the same gas under constant temperature and pressure conditions, it follows from Avogadro's law and the definition of molar mass that the volume to mass ratio is also a constant. And so we could have worked entirely in mass uh, without converting to moles and solve this problem much more efficiently. And I mention that because it's going to be relevant to question 12 where there's a sort of if there's a long-winded way to solve this and there's a more efficient way to solve this. So we have a mixture of gases at some temperature 38 degrees C and that temperature may be relevant. So you know what let's go ahead and convert that into Kelvin. So 273 plus 38 if my math skills serve me right, is going to be 311 Kelvin. And we've got three gases, 15 grams of helium, 67 grams of nitrogen, and 86 grams of oxygen. And we're interested in the total pressure of the system, so the sum of the three partial pressures, according to Dalton's law, is one way to think about this, given that the partial pressure of helium is this value right here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually write that out to the side here, that the partial pressure of helium, let's call it PHE, is equal to 0 0.586 atmospheres. So in essence, what we want to find then are the remaining two partial pressures, right? We want to find the partial pressure of N2, the partial pressure of O2, and then use Dalton's law and just add the three of them up to find the total pressure. And we'll go ahead and note that here at the bottom. That the total pressure is simply going to be the partial pressure of helium, which we already know, 0.586 atmospheres, plus the partial pressure of N2, plus the partial pressure of O2. Okay, and all the gases, this is important, are at 38 degrees C, this constant temperature, and they're all occupying the same volume. So we can think of this as a constant temperature, constant volume type of situation where the gases differ only in their partial pressures. Okay, well, something that's going to help us here is to keep in mind that, similar to Avogadro's law, which says that volume and number of moles are in a constant ratio. Pressure and number of moles are in a constant ratio when volume and temperature are held constant. So the ratio of the partial pressure of helium, which we know, to the number of moles of helium, that same ratio applies to the other two gases inside this container, this imaginary container we're thinking of. And we can find that ratio for helium just by determining the number of moles of helium here. And for that, we're going to simply take 15 grams and divide by the molar mass of helium, classic straightforward stoichiometry stuff. When we do that, we arrive at 3.748 moles of helium. And what I want to do now is calculate this ratio, partial pressure divided by the number of moles, which is going to be constant for all of the gases. Now that we know what the number of moles of helium are, we can calculate this ratio. It's 0 0.586 atmospheres for every 3.748 moles of helium. So now you may see where this is going. If I can determine the moles of the other two gases, which I absolutely can because their masses are given, I can determine the partial pressures of those other two gases fairly straightforwardly. So here we see a case where using an empirical gas law really helps us short circuit this problem and solve it pretty efficiently. So now let's calculate the numbers of moles of N2 and O2 based on these masses and get the partial pressures from there. For nitrogen we end up with 2.392 moles and for oxygen we end up with 2.688 moles. Now to find our partial pressures we multiply each of those 
numbers of moles, 2.392, 2.688, by our constant ratio of partial pressure per mole within this imaginary container, 0.156 atmospheres per mole. So I'm going to work from the bottom up. We end up with, for O2, a partial pressure of 0.419 atmospheres. That's 0.156 times 2.688. And for nitrogen, we end up with 0.373 atmospheres. And that is 2.392 times 0.156. So now we've got the partial pressure of N2, we've got the partial pressure of O2, and we've got the given partial pressure of helium, and we can simply add these three to find the total pressure of gases in the mixture, and this comes out to 1.378 atmospheres. So a big lesson of this problem is to think about the empirical gas laws, and think about how they might save you time. Here, recognizing the relationship between pressure and number of moles up here under constant volume and temperature conditions helped us solve this problem pretty efficiently by doing a very simple calculation for each gas and then adding up the three partial pressures that resulted from those calculations.